Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are Good you day. today? Yes. Yesterday, I'm working. Oh, you work today. That's nice. And the rest of you, how are you doing? Okay. Uh, nice to hear that. I see that just four people is, uh, well, just four in the meeting. Uh, we're going to start then, and I'm going to check attendance later, hoping that uh, more people get into the meeting. So right now we're going to start and check the material. So um, I understand that some people is still in traffic. Thank you for letting us know, Judy. And some other, well, Danny told me that he's not feeling well and some other sad news via chat, but we have to continue with the program. So uh, to start with today, we're going to go through the manual and probably go and solve some exercise from the platform. I have seen that some of you have completed all the exercises, but still most of the people in the group have not. I've seen that some of them are just completing the section number one and part of a section two. And remember that it is mandatory to have uh, most of the exercise completed by this time. We are a little bit more advanced than in half of the course. So um, we have to, to complete those exercises. But first, let me continue with the program. So as we have been requested to uh, continue here. So in unit number three, you see the topic of the unit is monitoring personnel. I'd like to see if there is some uh, in, or one volunteer to read uh, what is this going to be about? Interpret the information. I started surely char review efficacy Taxi a body or survive being and on the screen, so we stay monitor person improving for clouds. This is a way of a project to swelly live programs and restoring every formation about about it, how a project to be programmer a real picture. Okay, thank you so much, Juan. Somebody else to read about the vocabulary that we're going to cover here? Yeah, on the start, start year for a basic film. Okay, Juan, you can continue reading the vocabulary. Per Vocabulary to name. <clears throat> Vocabulary to name. Restaurant, stand number. Staff. 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 Mm -hmm. Member. Example. And uh -huh. example. This is examples. E.g. means examples. Mm -hmm. Example. Servers. Server, server, banner, bartenders, bartender, server, servers, assistant, assistant, host, host, etc. etc. Good evening, Carlos. Vocabulary to name. Vocabulary to name. Elements in a staff schedule. Element instant uh, schedule. Chart. Chart. Example. Example. Break. Break. Overtime. Overtime. Shift. Shift. Call. Call. Call in. Call in. Etc. Etc. Turns. Turns. Related to. Related to. Surveillance. 
Shall we begin? Example. Example. Theft. Theft. Wage. Wage. Behavior. Behavior. Reassure. Reassure. Okay, thank you so much, Juan, for volunteering to read. Now, we have a conversation here uh, where we're going to start the unit number three. It is um, about monitoring personnel. We're going to interpret the information here and present in a staff schedule chart. So um, this conversation is quite simple. So I think that we're going to go ahead and practice in the breakup rooms. Um, but I would like to know if there is uh, any new word or vocabulary for you. Okay, like do cheru for to die Jenny. All right. All right. Or you have a start from where for Gladys as does of the day from night to eleven AM. Eleven and young. <clears throat> Then you can then, go to lunch. Then you come to lunch. You have to be back at 1 p.m. You have it to be about 1 p.m. Yeah. So that so you can serve. So that you can serve. Yeah, so you can send. For, for the rest of the afternoon. For the rest of the afternoon. Until 6 p.m. At the 6 p.m. We'll do, Ruben. We'll do, Ruben. Thanks for the reminder. It's just a reminder. Thanks for the reminder. Thanks for the reminder. Okay, um, we're going to practice this in groups. This is part of your material that you have there. And also I send it in the presentation before the class. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm going to create the breakup rooms and allow the sharing options. Don Carlos Mari, Don Francisco Noemi, and Noemi, perdón, Noemi.
Okay, before we go ahead and role play the conversation, I'm going to check attendance. So if it is possible for you to turn on the cameras, it would be appreciated. So let's see. Oh, the file is hiding. Oh, one second. Okay, Andrea Laurena. Present teacher. Thank you. Belen Batres. Carlos Mario. Present Belen. teacher. Thank you. Dijo Belen que no se iba a poder conectar hasta las nueve porque tiene un inconveniente. Okay, thank you so much. Carmen René. Present teacher. Thank you, Carmen. Delmi Guadalupe. Oh, Delmi, she's not going to be in today. Francisco Nehemias. Present, teacher. Thank you, Francisco. Helen Dionelli. I'm here, teacher. Thank you, Helen. It is Joanna. Present. Thank you. Jose Arnoldo. Present. Thank you, Jose. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Present teacher. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz. Present teacher. Maricela del Carmen. Present teacher. Moises Alberto. I am here, teacher. Okay. Noemi Albertina. Present, teacher. Rafael Antonio. I am here. Okay. Reina Margarita. Rubén de Jesús. Present, teacher. Judy Araceli. I'm here, teacher. Thank you, Jose Rudy. Jose Rudy. Ana Mercedes. Present. Okay, Maria Angelica. Present. Okay. Imelda Elizabeth. Present. Susana Esmeralda, oh, she's never in. Okay. Iris, Iris le ha mandado un mensaje que no tiene problemas ahorita. Ah, okay, let me check if I... Está mal de la garganta, no puede hablar, solo es escuchar Iris. Ok, Iris, thank you so much. Gracias por ayudarme con eso porque aquí está conectada. Ok, thank you so much. Uh, let me continue sharing the screen. And this is the conversation that we already practiced. It was in the previous slide. Uh, do we have volunteers to role play this conversation? Raise your hands. Helen. Moises and Rafael. Okay, let's listen to Moises and Rafael. Okay. okay. Your schedule for today, Jenny. All right. You have to start comparing for Gladys the costes today from night. To 11 a.m. Then you can go to lunch. You have to be back at 1 p.m. so that you can serve it for the rest of the afternoon until 6 p.m. Will do, Ruben. Thanks for the reminder. 
Okay, thank you so much. A very good job. Thank you for participating. Uh, this word is pronounced covering. Covering. And in this one, remember that the E doesn't sound the last E. So we say serve. 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 Thank you so much. Okay, we have Juan Ricardo Menedemo. And who wants to practice with Juan Ricardo? Eden Barraza. No está. Hola. Hey, Carlos Mario, raise your hand. So you can uh, practice with Carlos Mario. Okay. Empieza Carlos Mario. Okay. Let's check, let's check your schedule for today, Jenny. Erling. All right. Oh, no, perdón. All right. You have to start covering for Gladys as the horses today from 9 to 11 p.m. A.M. Sorry. Then you can go to lunch. You have to be back at 1 p.m. so that you can serve for the rest of the afternoon until 6 p.m. Without ruin. Thank you for thy raining. Reminder. Minder. Pardon. Minder. Reminder. Reminder. Very Reminder. good. Thank you so much. Excellent job, Carlos. Thank you, Juan. You did it very good. Yes. Uh, let's see, we have Maricela. And who wants to practice with Maricela? Hi. Maricela and a volunteer to practice with Maricela. Okay. Okay. Email that. Thank you. Okay, let's check your schedule for today, Jenny. All right. You have to start covering for Gladys as to hey, I don't know how to pronounce it. Hostess. Hostess. Uh huh. Hostess, Hostess. today from. 9 to 11 a.m. Then you can you then you can go to lunch. You have to to be back at 1 p.m. so that you can serve before the rest of the afternoon until 6 p.m. Will do, Ruben. Thanks for the reminder. Okay. Thank you so much for your participation. So let's remember, serve, 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 serve. Uh-huh, the E is not pronounced. Okay, and then the next exercise, it is to match the name of the staff member to the right descriptions. We have executive chef, server, host, or hostess. Remember that host is for male and hostess is for female. That's the difference. Remember, host for male and hostess is for female. Then we have kitchen manager and finally cashier. I'll give you some time for you to uh, match the name of the staff member with the correct descriptions. One chef, Thai person, Ali, payment, and restaurant.
Okay, who wants to share the first one? What is the first the one? Okay, cashier. Can you read the description, please? The person handling payments in a restaurant. Excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, Second. Uh, pe no, I mean. A person in charge of creating menus. 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 Uh, managing kitchen staff and food standards is the, the executive chef. Excellent. Number Thank one. you so much. Thank you so much. That is correct, Naomi. Eh, Juan Ricardo, ¿quería decir algo? Oster a person, a washer, a star, poor shark, fox, a Michael Suri, ever, ever John, is trying. Mm, no, creo que no sería esa, Andrea. Number two is a what? The third one. Que vamos aquí. Um, ¿Cuál sería a person who hires staff? Is number one. No, perdón. Number four. <laughs> kitchen manager. Okay, kitchen manager. Can you read the description? Uh, your microphone is off. Pusha. A, waiter, a person who hires staff, purchases food, and makes sure everyone is trying it. Okay. Thank you very much, Andrea. Purchases trained. Okay. Purchases and trained. Very good. Thank you so much. And that is correct the answer. Let's see for the fourth. Volunteer. Post. Uh, or waitress who attends customer with food and drink is server. Excellent. Thank you so much. And the last one? A person who waits a right guest welcomes them into the restaurant and seats them. Aha, uh -huh. that is the host or hostess. Very good. Thank okay. you so much. And let's discuss these questions. Remember that the answers are in the conversation that we previously practiced. I'll give you some time for you to answer these questions. Remember that the answer is in the conversation. Okay, uh, volunteer for number one, you can raise your hand. Let's see. Do 
Then you have the answer for number one. Okay, I have Carlos Mario. Thank you. Uh, when does Jenny shift the star? The star at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay. 9 to 11 a.m. Okay, thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. Uh, number two, volunteer for number two. Francisco, thank you so much. What is Jenny job in the afternoon? Hostess. Jennifer's job in the restaurant. In the restaurant. Hostess. Okay, and thank you, Noemi. Number three. Number three. Jenny has to serve. Has to serve uh, for the rest for the um, of the afternoon. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. So first, it's uh, the first part of the day or the shift. She is a waitress, right, or a server, and then in the afternoon she is a hostess. Hmm. Kind of heavy, right? Okay, and this is in regards of the material. It, uh, we have been asked to continue using this material. And before we continue, esto quedó pendiente de ayer. Okay, but yes, before we continue with that, I'm going to go ahead and check the platform with you. Since uh, we need to continue with the rest of the exercise that we have pending. So let me check here. I see a hand raised. Um, Noemi, do you have any question? No question? Okay. No, no question. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No word. Okay. Let me see what is the platform? Okay, we have got it here. And here we are in the section number three, as you may see, uh, we need to continue solving the exercises. Most of you have finished the section one and um, the section two, some people is still missing with the section number two. Remember that you have it completed, right? The, the number um, section one, two, and three, and also the midterm exam must be finished. And if you can go ahead and continue with the Final exam, that would be excellent. Um, okay, this one is the exercise that we just did. So just to, for you to check if the answers are correct or if you don't have any glitch in the platform. Uh, in the number one, it says the person handling payments in the restaurant. Do you remember the answer for this one? Cashier. 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 Number two, a person in charge of creating menus, managing kitchen staff, and food standards. All stays. All stays. Executive chef. Chef. Executive chef. Number three, a person who hires the staff, purchases food, and makes sure everyone's trained. Kitchen manager. Okay, kitchen manager, a waiter or waitress who attends customer with food and drink. Server. 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 Okay. And finally, a person who gets, who greets, sorry, a person who greets arriving guests welcomes them to the restaurant and sit them. Host or hostess. Hostess. Host. The hostess. All right, let's send the answers. And yes, I'm showing that all the answers are correct here. So we are good to continue. Let's see the next one. Okay, in this one it says read the following sentences and choose the best way to express the superlative form. That is superlatives. Tomorrow we will go ahead and continue with the superlatives. We studied the comparatives, but in Start this one, day. 
that good state. In this one, we need to use superlatives. So don't use the best the or best. the goodest schedule as reward. The best. The best. The best. Uh -huh, the superlative is the best. So the sentence will be, don't use the best schedules as a reward. Mm -hmm, interesting. Number two, Jane is the fastest or fastest waitress? The fastest. Fastest. Faster. The faster. I hear the two answers. The fastest, the fastest. or fastest? fastest. The fastest. The, fastest. <laughs> the first one. Fastest. Okay, the first one. Yes, it is the first one. The fastest. <coughs> Mañana vamos a estudiar el tema, pero quisiera que avancen lo más que puedan en la plataforma porque si nos están exigiendo que se complete. Deliver orders are the most popular or the more popular right now? The most popular. The most. Popular. The, most. The, most. the most popular. Mm -hmm. The first answer. Now, it continues. This restaurant has the prettiest or the most pretty decorations. The pretty. The, most pretty. Pretty. the, pretty. the first sentence. Mm, the prettiest, okay. The kitchen manager works the longest or longest shift? Longest. The longest. Lo the longest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very really good. In most of the case, the superlatives incluyen, eh, los superlativos incluyen el artículo D. The most popular, the prettiest, the longest. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cuando hacemos superlatives, es, es, siempre van acompañados de este artículo. Yeah. Y a diferencia de los comparativos, decíamos, eh, los comparativos son para comparar dos cosas. ¿verdad? Y un superlativo es para sacar el mejor entre un grupo de cosas, más de dos. That is the difference. Y mañana vamos a ver cómo se forman los superlatives. Uh, let's see what do we have here. ¿Qué tenemos aquí? Okay, and this one is uh, like complete the sentences with should, could, would have, plus past participle. Okay, so this one is, uh, we're going to use auxiliaries, uh, plus past participle. Mm -hmm. Okay. The bartender, and we have should not, we have take that bottle of wine without permission. Should not have taken. Uh -huh. Should not have taken. Taken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, the servers would be in trouble if they had been late for the meeting. Would have been. Would have been. Have been. Would have been. Okay, you should ask the manager for a day off. Should have asked. Should have asked. Should have asked. Mm -hmm. Uh, the number four, the cashier should not take that money from the register. Should not have taken. Should, should not have taken. Number five, I should call to let the manager I was sick. Should have called. Good. 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 Ok, so tenemos que ir usando como el mismo auxiliar y el verbo en pasado participio. Entonces sería... Should have, should have called. Should have called. Ok. And you see all the answers are correct. So en este ejercicio, si lo logran hacer más tarde o mañana o el fin de semana, 
Acuérdense que va a ir el mismo auxiliar que les están dando acá y el verbo en past participle. Eso es lo que tienen que hacer para completar este ejercicio en particular. Let's see the, this one. Uh, it says, match the words to their meaning. Ok, what is, um, esto es como más de definiciones. Mm -hmm. eh, so, the way someone acts, ¿qué sería? La manera en que alguien behavior. actúa. Ok, behavior. The way someone acts would be behavior. behavior. Now, uh, number two, the action or crime of stealing. Yeah. The amount of money paid to an employee. Wage. 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 Mm -hmm. Wage. Something that causes for fear or nervousness is? Resource. Spooky. 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 To remove someone's doubts and fears. Pressure. 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 Uh -huh. So we are good. So remember the answers. The way someone acts is behavior. The action or crime of stealing is theft. Yeah. The amount of money paid to an employee that is way. Something that causes fear or nervous disease, okay? To remove someone's doubt and fear is to reassure. And let's see the three, nine in the... Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Acabo de silenciar porque el canelo por ahí como que ando algo bravo. So, vamos a continuar aquí. Um, if you know the answers, you can go ahead and open up your microphone or and enable it, and then you can enable it. So, again, we have, uh, is this, which is correct? Choose the one you know is the proper one to use in each sentence. So, in this one, you will decide if it is going to be an, a comparative or a superlative. I have a brother who lives in Miami. So we did a more 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 more, more serious. serious. More serious. More serious. Okay, number three. Is colder? Colder. Colder. Mm -hmm. Second. More, more beautiful. More beautiful. More fearful. More rich. Richer. Richer. Richer than. That's correct. So let's review. Number one, remember it's older. Number two, more serious. Number three, colder. Number four, more beautiful. Number five, it's richer. And in this, you should have completed section number three, and then we will go ahead and continue with the rest of them. Uh, any questions so far with the exercises? <coughs> Tenemos preguntas acerca del ejercicio? Question. Uh -huh. What is your question? Siempre se va a utilizar el, el ah no, el cómo se llama verbo. Ah. 
¿En qué, Juan? Siempre hay que tener un verbo, ya sea una oración, una pregunta, siempre Como tenemos de que de poner de verbos. Cool. Ah, entonces Pero está de hablando de los superlativos o de los comparativos. Esos se usan adjetivos, se llaman adjetivos. Adjetivos. Adjetivos, Ajá. Adjetivos. Okay. nada más que hay superlativos y hay comparativos. Los comparativos ya los vimos. Mañana vamos a estudiar los superlativos. Superlativos. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, yesterday we left pending some exercise. Dejamos algunos ejercicios pendientes el día de ayer so let me get ready here ah, creo que aquí está. and here is where we go so we're going to start with the listening um, where are you oh. so we had the listening teníamos el listening pendiente so we're going to start from there ya con el material ya vimos la primera parte de la sección 3. So, vamos a continuar ampliando vocabulario, eh, puliéndonos con el listening, con el speaking. And we have this exercise, está en la presentación, es job hunting. We're going to listen people talk about the kind of work they are looking for. And we're going to select the job that would be best for each person. Hmm. I think that we did this one. No, no lo hicimos, so sí. Sí, sí, hicimos este listening. So we'll continue with the other one. Why did I include that one? Oh, it's, it's this one, it's personality traits. What are your personality traits? Do you know what is traits? What are your personality traits? Can you describe yourself? Or is a new word for you, traits? It's a new word, word for me. It's a new word. Okay. It's a teacher. Like the, the word traits, it's like characteristics that describes your personality. Son características. What are your personality traits? So you can say, I am responsible. Yes. Si esa Physical, new. Ya vamos a repasar, Juan. Esta pregunta eh, bastante frecuente se la hacen a uno en entrevistas. What are your personality traits? So si escuchan que les preguntan eso, se refieren a, sus, eh, a, a que se describa las características de su personalidad. No físicamente, like personalidad, it's like I am, uh, I am responsible, I am a um, um, reliable person, um, um, I'm a hardworking person. So you have to describe your personality. A eso se le refiere esta palabra, personality traits. Son como rasgos personales o de características de la personalidad. Uh, so, Let's see, we have this list. Some are, some are positive and some of them are negative. Let's see if we are good with the vocabulary. The first one we have creative, critical, disorganized, efficient, forgetful, generous, hardworking, impatient, level-headed, moody, punctual, reliable, short-tempered, and strict. Is there any new word for you? Uh, yes, uh, I don't know what is the meaning of re relatable. Uh, reliable es una persona en que usted puede um, confiar en que va a hacer las cosas que usted le pida, en quien usted pueda delegar. That is reliable. Okay, thanks. En Moodly, teacher. Or Moody. 
Uh, Moody es una persona que ahora quizás le llamaríamos bipolar. Moody. Oh, es que cambia fácil, o sea, ahorita está súper feliz y al rato está mega enojado. That's Moody. Level-headed. Uh, Level-headed refers to a person that is calm and sensitive. Es como una persona nivelada en su, en su eh, comportamiento. Ok. Thank you, Dutch. Es como una persona calmada y sensata. That is level-headed. Sería más bien sensato, nivelado en sus pensamientos, sensato. And uh, strict. Strict is like in Spanish, estricto o estricta. Ok. Mm -hmm. Any other one? Short tempered. Uh, short tempered sería una persona como en español le decimos de mecha corta. <laughs> Que esto se enojan fácil o explotan con facilidad. Oh. Mm -hmm. That is short tempered. Any Ch other which is not new for you? Teacher, uh, uh, forget, forgetful. Forgetful es una forgetful. persona olvidadiza. Forgetful. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other? ¿Hay alguna otra? So this is very important vocabulary. Siempre que a usted le preguntan, uh, how, do, how would you describe yourself? Uh, ¿Cómo te describirías a ti mismo? No le están, o sea, obviamente no es física, sino que son su personalidad. O si le preguntan, what are your personality traits? Eh, es bueno que ustedes tengan bastante vocabulario, no solo decir, ah, I'm very responsible. ¿Y qué más? O sea, una persona tiene muchas cualidades, ¿verdad? Entonces, entre más vocabulario tienen es mejor, porque si no, pues suena como que esta persona no sabe mucho inglés, ¿verdad? So, you can ask, um, make a list of your positive personality traits and add them to your vocabulary. And also you can uh, make a list of negative, but obviously in, a, in an interview, you're not going to talk negative about yourself, <laughs> but just for vocabulary. Uh, is there any other question about this vocabulary? Más preguntas? No? Okay, so let's... Um, Let's say um, we're going to make a list, this list. Pueden escribirla en su cuaderno para que practiquen un poco de escritura. Y así se nos van quedando también las palabras nuevas. And we are going to classify these adjectives into positive and negative. The first one is already done for us. It is creative. It's positive. What do you think about critical? can be both, right? What do you think? Yes, yes. I think it can, it can be both. Yes, it can be both. So you can write positive slash negative. <laughs> Pueden escribirlo así, positive and negative.
Have you finished? Finish. Okay, so we have checked the first two of them now. Disorganized. What do you have with a, uh, for disorganized? Is that positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Mm -hmm. Efficient. Positive. Positive, correct. Forgetful. Negative. Negative, okay. Generous. Positive. positive. Yes, positive. Hardworking. Positive. 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 Impatient. Negative. 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 Level headed. Positive. Positive. Moody? Negative. 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 Punctual? Positive. 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 Reliable? Positive. 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 Short tempered? Negative. 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 Strict? Negative. Mm. Positive. Positive. Positive is less negative. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that can be both. Puede ser ambos, ¿verdad? So yeah. in, in some cases that can be a positive thing, but it, it doesn't apply for everything to be strict is good or, or bad. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It depends. Okay, so you did a nice job with this exercise. Now, the next thing that we have to do in order to practice this vocabulary is to tell um, your partners about people you know with this personality trait. Uh, for example, my sister, my sister is very creative, all right? Uh, so you have to mention people that you know with these personality traits, okay? Uh, my boss is very critical, okay? My youngest son is very disorganized. Um, my, um, I am very efficient. <laughs> Um, my husband is really forgetful. Yeah. Um, my youngest son is very generous. And then you can continue mentioning people that you know for every single of these uh, personality traits. Vamos a hacer una oración por cada uno, mencionando a alguien que conozcamos que tenga estos uh, rasgos de personalidad. One per each one. So you can say my best friend Anna is hardworking. For example, uh, my friend uh, Ricardo is really impatient and so on. One per each one. I'll give you some time. Teacher. 
Yes. How do you say sobrina? Sobrina is niece. I'm going to write it in the chat. Niece. N I E C E. Mm -hmm. Okay. I Thank you.
Perdón. Have you finished your sentences? No, teacher. No? Okay, I'll give you more time.
I need to practice and uh, say all your sentences. I'm going to create a breakup room so that everybody can read the sentence that you get. If you didn't finish, it's okay. You can read what you have. Okay, let's join the rooms and share what you have and all the sentences you have made. Teacher, tenemos que leer las que anotamos. Ok, thank you.
All right, now that everybody's back again, we're going to continue with the listening part. So in this part, we're going to listen for conversations. And what you can do is to write in your notebook number one, two, three, and four, and to write the adjective that describes them, right? For example, for a boss, we have creative, forgetful, serious. And then in number two, a coworker, we have unfriendly, generous, strange. For a teacher, we have moody, patient, and hardworking. And a relative, we have short temper, disorganized, reliable. So remember that we're going to listen to the four conversation and we are going to write the adjective that best describes each person. Are you ready? Yes, teacher. Okay. Remember that you can just write number one, two, three, four. It's not necessary that you write everything. So let me see if I'm sharing audio. Okay, I'm sharing now. Okay. Here it is. Okay, let's listen. Page 67, exercise eight. Word power. Personality traits. Part C. Listen to four conversations. Then check the adjective that best describes each person. One, a boss. How do you like your new boss? She's okay. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. What do you mean? Oh, she never enjoys a joke. She never laughs. It's hard to even get a smile out of her. Two, a coworker. Look what Mary gave me. Isn't this a great book? Yeah, it is. Mary's so sweet. She's always giving her friends and co-workers presents, and she's so helpful with her time. Three, a teacher. What do you think of the new French teacher? Well, she's kind of strange. She's happy one minute, and the next minute she's not. Four, a relative. Hey, what's wrong? I'm fed up with my brother. It seems like he's always angry at me about something. Really? Yeah, he gets upset so easily. I don't know what's the matter with him. Did you complete the answers or you would like to listen again? I already completed. Listen again, please. I'm already completed too. Okay, I see that some of you completed. Mm -hmm. If you, okay, I'm going to repeat for the ones who didn't uh, finish. And for the one who did it, you can listen again and check if your answers are correct. So I'm going to play it again. Page 67, exercise eight, word power, personality traits, part C. Listen to four conversations. Then check the adjective that best describes each person. One, a boss. How do you like your new boss? She's okay. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. What do you mean? Oh, she never enjoys a joke. She never laughs. It's hard to even get a smile out of her. Two, a coworker. Look what Mary gave me. Isn't this a great book? Yeah, it is. Mary's so sweet. She's always giving her friends and coworkers presents, and she's so helpful with her time. Three, a teacher. What do you think of the new French teacher? Well, she's kind of strange. She's happy one minute, and the next minute she's not. Four, a relative. Hey. What's wrong? I'm fed up with my brother. It seems like he's always angry at me about something. Really? Yeah, he gets upset so easily. I don't know what's the matter with him. Okay. 
Okay, let's see your answers. So what do you got for number one? Serious. 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 Aha, uh -huh, that is correct. Serious. What do you got for number two? Generous. 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 That is correct. Generous. Uh, number three. Moody. Moody. Correct. <laughs> Moody. And number four. Short temper. Short temper. Short temper. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Good job with this one. The next thing that we have here is the clauses with because. Remember that because uh, introduces a cause or a reason. Let us listen to the <coughs> audio in the grammar focus. Page 68, exercise 10, grammar focus. Clauses with because. The word because introduces a cause or reason. I'd make a good journalist because I'm good at writing. I could be a teacher because I'm very creative. I wouldn't want to be a teacher because I'm very impatient. I could never be a stockbroker because I can't make decisions quickly. Okay, so as you may see, um, they are expressing, eh, es, estamos como expresando eh, que podríamos ser o en que podríamos ser buenos y la razón, el por qué. Eh, entonces es ahí donde se dice because. Si estudiamos la oración, so you can say, I'll make a good journalist. Eh, pues estoy diciendo, yo podría ser un buen reportero. La oración se puede quedar ahí, pero si damos más detalles o introducimos la razón, para introducir la razón lo hacemos con because. I am good at. Y acordamos que cuando hay una preposición antes de un verbo, ese, ese verbo tiene que ser con ing. Because I'm good at writing. Okay. Um, ¿Hay alguna pregunta hasta acá? No questions? No questions, I think. No, no, no questions. Everything is good, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Teacher, I have, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the because is, is going uh, after the, the uh, subject. Sí, eh, va antes del sujeto. Son como dos, eh, cuando dice eh, clauses, cuando dice clauses aquí, se, se, eh, gramaticalmente una cláusula es una oración. En este caso, una es independiente y la otra es dependiente. ¿Qué quiere decir independiente? La independiente, en este caso, la tenemos al principio. Independiente quiere decir que tiene sentido ella sola. Yo podría decir, I'll make a good journalist. Es una oración completa, tiene sentido por sí sola. Estoy diciendo, yo podría ser una buena reportera. So that's okay. Esa es la independiente. La dependiente es la que no tiene sentido por sí sola. Necesita de la otra. Porque si yo solo digo, porque soy buena escribiendo. No, no tiene sentido que de repente solo diga eso, ¿verdad? Porque soy buena escribiendo. Entonces, eso se conoce como una cláusula dependiente. Entonces, eh, tenemos la independiente. Y luego la dependiente es la que va a iniciar con because. Porque estoy dando la razón. Because. Y después de because vamos a escribir al sujeto. Eh, y algunas veces si quiero decir yo soy. Vamos a usar verbo be. Y luego si no. Es para decir habilidades, vamos a usar can. Y luego, pues, el complemento. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Is there any other question? ¿Hay alguna otra pregunta?
Ah, teacher. No? Okay, so vamos a chequear asistencia ya por la segunda vez en la noche y luego vamos a continuar con el siguiente ejercicio. So I'm going to stop sharing for a while. And let us check. Andrea Laurena. Present teacher. Thank you, Andrea. Belen Batres. Present teacher. Thank you, Belen. Carlos Mario Avedaño. Present teacher. Thank you, Carlos. Carmen René. Present teacher. Thank you, Carmen. Delmi Guadalupe. Ah, Delmi está enferma. Francisco Nehemías. Present. Thank you, Francisco. Helen Dionelli. Present teacher. Thank you, Helen. It is Joanna. Present. Thank you, it is Jose Arnoldo. Present. Thank you, Jose. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Present teacher. Thank you. Kenia Cecilia. Present teacher. Thank you, Kenia. Marisela del Carmen. Present teacher. Thank you, Marisela. Moises Alberto. I am here, teacher. Thank you, Moises. Noemi Albertina. Present teacher. Thank you, Noemi. Rafael Antonio. Present. Thank you, Rafael. Ahora le toca su uno a uno. Si se puede quedar un ratito después de la clase. That would be great. Reina Margarita. Present teacher. Thank you, Reina. Uh, Rubén de Jesús. Present teacher. Thank you, Rubén. Judy Araceli. I'm here, teacher. Thank you, Judy. Jose Rudy. Jose Rudy. Ana Mercedes. Present teacher. Thank you. Maria Angelica. Present. Thank you. Imelda Elizabeth. Present. Thank you, Susana Esmeralda. Ella no está. Ok. Okay, this is where we uh, stop, right? So we are going to um, create clauses in, with the connector because or the, let's complete the sentences in column A with appropriate information in column B. Then we are going to compare. Remember that you can do this in your notebook. You're going to write number one and then the letter that completes the number one. For example, this one says, I wouldn't want to be a nurse. Which letter would complete the number one? Because I don't like hospitals. Uh-huh, so number one, letter A. I wouldn't want to be a nurse because I don't like hospitals. So that's what you're going to do. I'm going to give you some minutes for you to complete this one.
finished? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, let's raise your hand yes, up volunteer for number two. Um, I'd like to be a novelist because I because I love creative writing. Okay, I love creative writing. Excellent. Uh, volunteer for the number three. I could I, never. I did. I did. I be no release. Are uh, your work is day to day? A volunteer for number three. Me, teacher. Thank you so much. I could never be um accountant because I'm terrible with numbers. Excellent. Thank you so much. A volunteer for number four. Number four, volunteer. I could make a bad waiter because I have a ter terrible memory. Okay, excellent. That is correct. A volunteer for number five. I could be flight attendant because I really enjoy traveling. Okay, excellent. And number six. Uh, volunteer for number six. I never, never work on a cruise ship because I get seasick very easily. Uh -huh. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, let us think about our personal qualities and skill and then complete these statements. So, for example, I wouldn't want to be a nurse because I hate seeing blood, okay? I can't stand seeing blood. So I think uh, I wouldn't want to be a nurse because I can't stand seeing blood. What about you? So lo mismo, pero van a completar con sus propias cualidades. Okay. O si de verdad creen que sí podrían ser enfermeros, podrían escribir, I'd like to be a nurse because I love taking care of sick people. That could be one. So, um, is the exercise clear? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, yes, teacher. you have time to complete this exercise.
Finish, teacher. Okay, would you like to share your sentences? I volunteer to share your sentences. I will I wouldn't want to be a nurse because I don't like needless. I like oh, to be yeah. a novelist mm -hmm. because I don't have the ability. Mm -hmm. I could never be an accountant because I'm losing at math. Okay. I will make a bad waiter because I don't have Yes. Uh, probably she lost connection. Any other volunteer? Because of the hospital. Because I really enjoy traveling. Because I have memory. memory. Because I feel child very special. Because I love gravity ring day. Because a young terrorist with number. No, Amy. Okay. I like to be a kindergarten teacher because I have a lot of patients and the little kids are very cute. Mm -hmm. Excellent sentence. You can share the rest of your sentences, or is that the only one you did? Okay, thank you so much, Noemi. Any other volunteer? Is there any other volunteer? Francisco, thank you. I will, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to be a nurse because I don't like needless. I like to be a novelist because I am bored of writing. I could never be an accountant because I don't like numbers. I don't, I pardon. I will make a bad weather because I like to be friendly. I could be a flying attendant because I like to travel. I never work a, a cruise, cruise ship because I don't like the sea. Oh, really? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Is that all? Is that on todas? Okay, you did an awesome job. Before we finish, is there any other volunteer? Tenemos algo otro voluntario or? That would be it for today. Carmen Rene, go ahead. Okay. I would want to be a nurse because I don't like the hospitals. Uh, I would like to be, uh, no, I don't like to be a novelist because I don't have that much creat 
activity. Mm -hmm. I could never, I could, I could be a contact because I, I like the numbers. I like make a bad a waiter because I don't have much balance. Oh. No sé si es equilibrio, eh, balance o uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. Excellent. <laughs> okay. I could be flight attendant because I really enjoy traveling. I never got a cruise ship eh, because it could eh, mark the vomit. Oh, yeah, you get seasick. Uh -huh. okay. Get seasick es cuando se marea la gente y vomita seasick. <laughs> That's very common. Uh -huh, okay. Good job. Thank you so much, Renee, for your participation. So, um, is there any other volunteer or we may go to sleep? That would be it. Okay, so thank you so much for joining today's meeting. Thank you so much for your participation. It's really appreciated. I hope you have learned a lot today and see you tomorrow for more. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good tomorrow. Good night. 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 Hi, Rafael, how are you doing? Hi, teacher. Hi, how are you? How do you feel? Fine. Um, very well. That's nice. And how do you feel yes. with the classes? No, no lo teacher. ¿Cómo se siente con las clases? ¿Cómo siente que ah, va? Bastante bien. Eh, hay cosas que, que las comprendo mejor. Lo que sí me cuesta es el, el escuchar. Leerlo se me hace más fácil, pero escuchar sí me cuesta. Eh, escuchar le cuesta. Sí. Ok. Uh -huh. eh, ¿Qué siente difícil? Um, ¿Los ejercicios en sí? O, o a una persona, sea teacher o lo que sea hablando. ¿Qué es lo que siente difícil? No, no, o sea, siento que el inglés lo hablan bastante rápido. Me cuesta captar las palabras. Yo sé que lo estoy hablando una persona o, por, los, por los ejercicios. Uh -huh. Ajá. Pero tengo una duda, teacher, con, con la tarea 2, de, de, de la unidad 2 en la tarea 11. Que no pude hacerlo, escribir la, la pregunta. Déjeme eh, meterme en la plataforma de nuevamente para ver el ejercicio. Ok, me dice que es de la sección 2, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Vamos a esperar un ratito que cargue. Ok, ahí estamos en la sección 2. A dos once. 
La siguiente. La siguiente. Mm, ok. La número dos. Wouldn't it be better to? Déjeme, se la voy a poner en el chat ahorita. Vaya, así tiene que quedar, Rafael. No sé si la logra ver ahí en el chat. Sí. La puede copiar y pegar para... Um, a muchos les dio problema y les funcionó sí. hacer eso, copiar y pegar. Sí, siento que la tengo igual, pero no sé en qué estará. Tal vez sea el acento sí. o tal vez haya algún espacio. Sí, podría ser, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Sí, ahí sí me la tomo bien. ¿Y la número cuatro? De este mismo ejercicio. Sí. La número cuatro, fíjese que a mí me salía mala también hasta que le puse punto al final de la oración. Así la aceptó. Allí no vamos a cambiar por better. It will be better. No, así, con be, así como está ahí, would be. It would be a good idea. It would be a good idea to have a training manual for chefs. Okay. Me sale mala. Me la puede enviar al chat para ver. ¿Cuál? ¿La cuatro? ¿La cuatro? Ya se la envía al chat también. Ajá, el de la meeting. ¿O, o quiere uh -huh. que se los mande al...? No, no, ahí está. Ahí está. Ah, yeah. Ok, ya ahí ya está ya. Uh -huh. Teacher, y tengo una pequeña duda con respecto a un tema. Fue de las primeras clases. fue la señal, Piché? Sí, se me fue la señal, me está fallando el internet, pero sí, me dijo que tenía duda con un tema, ¿verdad? Sí, uh, hay uno que, eh, que hay que agregarle ER, me parece que es de los... Comparativos. De los comparativos, uh -huh. ajá. Y me recuerdo que hay unas reglas, pero... No. Hay unas reglas para aplicarlo, ¿verdad? Sí, eh, mañana vamos a ver ese tema. Bueno, vamos a ver los superlativos, pero voy a hacer repaso de ese tema también para que, ah, para bueno. refrescar lo de los comparativos Ajá. y sumarle los superlativos. Ah, ok. Ah, bueno. Entonces, Se va a conectar mañana, temprano ya. mañana, si no, espero pero a que espero usted que esté sí. in. <ríe> sí, sí. Ok. ¿Algo pero, otra cosa, pero, Rafael? Solamente Ok, vaya, intente sí. con los ejercicios y cualquier cosa puede escribir, estamos a la orden. Ok, thank you. Ok, ahí lo dejo ir a dormir y mañana estaré pendiente vale. para ver si está por ahí para el repaso. Ok, okay, okay. thank you so much for thank joining. You. Good night, see you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow.